What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode at the Gruesome Garage and another episode of fixing up this Jeep. And finally, we get to putting it back together. As you see, I got the transfer case in and not only did I get the transfer case in, we got the new trans mount on. So next is we're gonna be focusing on the cross member sitting over there next to my Jeep tire. So when this thing came to us, his main concern was he saw that the cross member was really only held on by these side bolts right here. This one and this one. And it was kind of like pinching the lower cross member because as you can see, the cross member doesn't have bolts on the side. So there's a piece that wraps around from rough country and it really wasn't even bolted in over here. It was bolted in on this middle bolt, which isn't held in by the bracket. So his main concern was this was not bolted in correctly. It was moving around. So we need to figure out actually how to mount this correctly. And the first thing we need to do is fish for some bolts. As you can see over there, I got one in, fished. I'm gonna fish for another one over here. But I learned that I had to take off these rock sliders because Rough Country for one of the side frame bolts has this cute little flag nut. And the only way to get to that flag nut is in this slot right here, this factory slot. And guess what? As you can see, our rock sliders were covering that slot. So I couldn't extract this key. But now that we have the flag, we're ready to get it back together. So let's go fishing on the other side. We did all the boring work and got this off. So let's have some fun and fish the wire and try to get this old flag nut out. I think we can get it. Let's try to get it with one hand. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Did you look at that? Did you look at that? Say hello. Hello. Huh? Oh, 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 oh. Ah. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, come on now. Ta-da! We have captured the wild rough country flag nut in its natural habitat. So let's use the same hole for our nut for the bottom. Now, this nut, it's not really needed, but it's just extra security, I think. So why not? Oh, look at that. Whew. It's like a uh, hole in one shot. And again, let's see if I can do this with one hand. Sink up, tippy tip, tip, tip. Ah, you get the gist, guys. It's a little painted up there. So we're gonna have to force it in, but we're gonna get her in. Just give me a second. Got over here. No really persuaders so. though. Oh, I do. I do. Here we get this guy. Let me get a real tool. Now this one hand stuff. We got our strings ready to pull through here. And we got the jack ready to adjust this as we need it to put the cross member on. Another thing we did was we prepped the cross member a little. We Made cleaned. a little more room. Uh, it was, it looked like someone took a torch or something to it. It was absolutely eaten up. 
so we decided to just clean it up and make it look better another thing is we put oversized bolts in here i put whatever as big as i could go and that was half inch so i had to make these half inch the outsides are not going to be half inch but the inside one that we replaced is going to be so my idea is to run these strings through this hole bring it up bolt the cross member on and then get to these two bolts so let's see if my master plan can come together finally for the most part this cross member is finally bolted in correctly it has all the necessary hardware hardware the only thing it's missing is these four bolts right here because the old hardware i pulled out if you look it looks like it's been shaved down for when it wasn't completely tight and just rattling around in there so i'd like to get some new hardware for this so i'll go to the hardware store grab that and this cross member will be legitimate It'll be like it's supposed to. All we gotta do is put the skid plate on. But that's not as important, obviously, as being bolted down to the unibody. Because for some reason, whoever had this before didn't think that the cross member, something that's holding your whole front axle basically in, isn't important to be tightened. Went to the hardware store, picked up the bolts for final assembly. So now we can start putting these stupid rock sliders back on. Well, they're not stupid, but they're annoying because they were in the way <laughs> but you can see they're back on and we can start getting the front control arms back together they're a little shot so we're gonna rebuild those and I'm gonna bring the measurements for this drive shaft to Aki and get a new shaft this thing is coming back together pretty nicely since the cross number is dealt with now we get to move on to what's being connected to the cross member and that's these control arms luckily these Johnny joints were still good as you can see I can't move them with my hands but I can move them with a the rod and they feel great but these right here were shot as you can see right here they're like wallowed out and just eaten away how they should just how they shouldn't look not only that but these guys right here were just completely wallowed out you can as you see you can move the uh, pushing sleeve in there and that's uh, that's not good so that was a whole rig and roll from Rough Country. They do not carry them anymore. They told me to call Daystar. I called Daystar and they basically, you know, told me to screw off. So I went on Summit Racing. I measured the dimensions of those and I got something pretty darn close. The only difference is this sleeve is for a 916 bolt and this sleeve right here is for a 5 8 So we're going to have to drill out the control arm mounts, which is no big deal. Bigger bolt. It's going to be stronger anyways. And the other rigmarole is I realized that these right here are not from Rough Country. They're actually Curry Johnny joints. So somebody has replaced them. And I got to learn that the Curry Johnny joints and the Rough Country joints are completely different. So I had to figure out that or those up. Everything's good now. So these are ready to go back in. Well, the whole front end is apart. I decided I want to put the rear drive shaft back in anyway. So, and just get everything out of the way done in the back. So I went ahead and changed the shackle angle before it was over here. It looks like they even tried to put it over here. But as you can see, that shackle angle at ride height would rub on the control, on the, uh, on the new bracket. So I just feel like that's terrible. And this shackle angle is a lot better. So we're gonna throw the tires back on take those jack stands out and get the back back on wheels so we can measure for the drive shaft and get that done start working on the front again well I was gonna start working on the back a little more but to be honest I want to get this thing on all fours again now that I have the ball joints I can finish up the front and like I said I want to get it on all fours because down there it's, you know got some trans fluid and I really would like to roll this out of the way and clean that up really well before i get back under there so you know we don't track all this crap in there and this and that it's gonna be so much easier to be able to clean that up once this thing is rolling so got the track bar out we're going to a rough stuff track bar because the other one is shot and it's rubber bushings i really don't like that for keeping an axle center so we are going to use the heim joints and we got it all measured out and cut up so my brother's gonna weld that for me and 
We also need to get these mounts welded in because if you saw in the previous video that those mounts were just put in there, pushed in, and uh, the bushings are actually supposed to be welded on, and they were not. They were just slid in there. But let's start taking this actual apart. We, as you can see, we need to do a couple of studs, this and that, ball, jo ball joints, blah, blah, blah. So let's get at it. Seems like I might be stuck right now. That snap ring in there, I can't seem to get with my two pliers. I think I'm gonna need to order a better snap ring pliers or source one from somewhere and get back at it. I'm not gonna keep on fighting with myself because if you don't have the right tool, why even try? Let's just do it right. So we don't have to ruin the snap ring either. That's, that's really deep. Well. Let's have some fun. Since the hub bearing has defeated us for now, getting that C-clip, I'm waiting on a snap ring pliers. Snap ring slash C-clip. Since I'm waiting on that, we're gonna start trying to do progress other places. One thing is these bushings need to be welded in properly and we need to get this track bar correctly set up. So we have the track bar all cut and prepped over there, but let's get these bushings welded up. Time to burn. Lines just kind of going down. Some other things that we could do while we're waiting for those snap ring pliers is a T-case linkage. Now I got this all prepped and pulled together out of the Jeep because most people will just bolt it in one bolt, but the instructions say to put two bolts through it. And honestly, we're just gonna weld it. It's a lot stronger and I don't like that this bolt hole size is smaller than this one and it's just gonna you know go like this or if we could drill this out but you know we got a welder it's cleaned up 
Let's blow it on. She's all burned on now, fresh and smoky. We'll get this thing back to the Jeep after it cools down. Just needs a fresh coat of paint. We'll probably paint up the old track bar while we're at it. And then we'll move on to something else underneath. Just keep ourselves occupied for the time being while we wait for our beautiful Nipex. Since we got the transfer case mount back in for the linkage, we can install the linkage, ran through all the gears, tightened it up, it's all good to go. This Boost Works kit was the easiest kit that we've ever installed. It basically was bolt in, we adjusted it a little bit, and we were able to shift through all the gears with no problems. This is the first time that I've ever had that ease of a problem or ease of install with shift linkage from Boost Work, and I'm really happy with them because it seems like they've revised their kit a little and it makes life a lot easier. If you see up there, I had to use some self tappers to put the linkage or the shifter back in because all these little spacers or the nut certs just start spinning after a while. So right next to it, you put it right next to it with the self tapper and it works great. Put a little more silicone on there so it seals up and it's good to go. As you can see, these look a lot better than what came out of it. They're all welded and painted up. They look a lot like they're supposed to. Unlike the ones before that were rattling out and absolutely destroying the upper control arm mounts. Luckily, we were able to get this drill press over here and we drilled out the upper control arm mounts to half inch. One of them though was so wallowed out that we had to weld it back together. So if you see right here, we welded this one back together. You can kind of see the weld in here. And then we re-drilled it out to half inch. So these are good to go. Now, if only I could have that darn snap ring pliers because this whole front end would be back together. Oh guys, look what we finally got. The snap ring pliers and look what it did. It was super simple after I got these off. I saw there was a big old seal in here and I needed to use the pry bar. Oh, where is it? The pry bar. And I pried right here onto the U-joint yoke and I was able to push the seal right out nice and clean. We're gonna clean this up obviously after we reinstall or after we redo the ball joints. But guys, get yourself a decent set of snap ring pliers if you need. It made life so much easier. Now that we have that all apart, another thing I realized is we could start bolting our control arms back in. So right now, I got this one in, and I kind of want to put it up there because I got this nut off for the bolt joint, but this lower bolt joint nut, I can't get with a gun, so I need a torque on it. And sitting on jack stands and axle, you know, you start wrenching, and you're just going to try to rip the axle right off the jack stands. So let's start doing this. So to be able to truly bolt this control arm back in, this axle is gonna have to be much lower so we can manhandle these arms because they're not always the most fun, especially since it looks like they didn't weld the <clears throat> control arm mounts on bolted with these guys because uh, <laughs> these things really don't fit that well at all. I can completely understand why this was a whole mess to begin with. So we're gonna fix that, of course. Whatever we gotta do, we gotta do. But at least I can get the two lowers in and that's gonna help me out a lot and I can get that track bar in. So I gotta drill the holes for the low control arms on the other side, so let's get to start, let's start stripping all of this because as you can see over here, this is all in my way to be able to drill out that lower control arm mount. Look at that, finally got these babies back in after some hard work but it feels good that they're bolted in properly and everything is correct there's no more slapping around bushings or the bolts being too small over here or these being shot due to that bushing being shot so we're now gonna finally bolt this front axle back into the Jeep now that these guys are bolted in we can finally get to tightening or loosening our lower ball joints because guess what 
The axle's not gonna float around on jack stands anymore. It's bolted right into the Jeep. This is coming out great. I'm really happy with how it is. It took a little struggle to do everything right, but at the end of the day, it's gonna come out great. Even with this thing coated in Port 15 and the castle nut, still having the cotter pin corroded in there, this thing I think is gonna, oh yeah, rips it right apart. Love this pea. This piece of uh, garbage right here. I bought this for a wheeling trip, thinking that it'd be smart since I had a couple of Makita batteries. And now I use this thing as much as possible because who wants to bring around an air hose everywhere they go? Vroom vroom. Got that thing right off of there. Now, these ball joints are absolutely shut as you can see. So, Try to knock these things out of here. Maybe a little heat, a little cooling. We'll get this ball joint pulling. I tried to hammer the other side, but Matt came over here, sprayed a little bit, and it got right off. This one over here popped off, but we hammered the castle nut too much, and now it doesn't want to come off. So we got to slice it off. It wasn't very fun, but we did it, guys. We got the ball joints done. Hubs are back on with the shafts, and we tightened all the bolts for the control arms. So guess what? We're ready to put some brakes back on this thing, throw some coils in it, and then hopefully we can get this thing on all fours again. I cannot wait. It's going to look great and hopefully feel a lot better than before. Jeep's finally on its own weight again, even though it doesn't have tires. So the only thing left is a track bar and we can get this thing steering again so matt's got the track bar prepped and ready we're gonna bolt that in we're gonna play around with the mounting of it because where it was was a little bit worse of an angle than what i like it to be so we're gonna drop it a hole up on the driver's side mount on the frame and it should be a little more level with the drag link where'd the jeep go Finally on its own weight. We pushed it out of the way. Got to deal with some brake lines tomorrow. So, gave her a little shove, but guess what? It's sitting on all four tires. This thing is almost ready to rock crawl. So if you want to see the finishing touches on this beast, tune in next time and you'll see this thing be ready to rock crawl.